All right. So if nobody has any questions about yesterday's stuff, um, I'm just going to start with a couple of concepts today. This is there's no math involved with today's stuff. Real, I mean, like real math. Uh, it's just more of a basic concept of a couple of weird phenomena that deal with waves and when waves kind of interfere with each other. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at a couple of different interactions of different waves. Now, these waves can be sound waves. These waves can be um, water waves. These waves can be um, anything that can oscillate. All right. So our goal today is to look at something called the law of superposition. And the idea behind this is that if if you have conditions that are just right, you can have wave amplitudes can be added to each other or can be subtracted. That should say from each other. Right. But whatever um, you can add and subtract wave amplitudes so you can get like a super big wave or you can have waves kind of cancel each other out. So when they combine to make super big waves, the concept is called constructive interference. So the idea behind constructive interference is, and I'll just kind of draw um, two phases here. So like, let's say we have two water waves that are moving toward each other like that, okay? When these two waves combine, because they're on the same side of the level or the equilibrium position, these waves, when they hit each other, will combine to make one big wave, right? So the idea is, is that when these things hit, that's about that bit. So it's going to basically, when they interact, it's basically going to double the size of the wave, okay? That's constructive interference. And the weird thing about this is that the wave, after they constructively interfere, they just kind of keep on cruising. So they just keep on moving through. But there's points where they do add up. That's constructive interference. Destructive interference is when water wave or any type of wave uh, kind of cancel each other out. So we have a wave that's traveling in the following way. Okay, so this guy, and that guy are traveling towards each other. You might notice that they're about the same size, but they're on opposite sides of the uh, equilibrium position. When they hit each other, they kind of cancel each other out. And after they pass through each other, they just keep on cruising. Okay, it's kind of a weird phenomenon with waves. Okay, now, it, is this hard to simulate? Uh, yeah, online. Yeah, sure. It, it, think of um, think of uh, sound waves doing this. You have sound waves that can do this, and you can get really loud constructive interference. Um, you get this in places like auditoriums that are set up to kind of acoustically magnify sounds from certain positions. Uh, they use bouncing off the walls and echoes to kind of like project the, the, the sound waves outward. Um, I'm going to give you an example of a real life example that I didn't understand until I took physics. And my real life example, and by the way, uh, this they have improved upon this, I guess, is my hometown's crap movie theater sound system. So I'm from a small town and like back in the 80s, they just threw like some uh, 80s and 90s, they just threw some speakers up, I guess, in this place. Um, it was a theater, and if you were standing on the stage of the theater, it would project the sound just like it would in normal um, normal uh, auditoriums. But the way they have the sound system set up, there were locations where the sound was really, really, really loud, which is how most movie theaters are set up when there's like an explosion or something, it's really loud. But there were these weird places, they're called nodes, you'll learn why in a little bit, that you literally couldn't hear the sound and i don't it just had to do with uh, how the speaker systems and the sound system is lined up with each other so if i were to draw the movie theater here's the screen okay and our movie theater had three sections with two rows so it had a section here a middle section and then a section here 
And so like this is a row you could walk in. This is a row. And these were the seating areas. All right. And if you sat in my hometown movie theater right there, you weren't hearing anything. And the reason you weren't hearing anything is because there was destructive interference there. So you would sit here and the movie would be really, really quiet. You could literally move here or here and you could hear. So like in my hometown, when I grew up, it, that was the last place that filled up. Most movie theaters, those are the last places that fill up. But that was the last place that filled up because people knew you couldn't hear anything there. It was really weird. I understand this till I took physics and understood that there was some weird acoustic issues there. Okay. So uh, waves can combine. Waves can cancel out. That's called the law of superposition. And that's the real life example. Like I said, I didn't understand until later. So when they combine, they create a situation that's called resonance. Um, resonance is uh, what exhibits when you uh, learn how to use a swing. So like one of when you guys were all little, there's no doubt that you had a period of your time of your life where you annoyed your parents because you jumped on a swing set and you wanted your parents to push you on the swing set. And parents are like, you just need to learn how to swing, bro. Like figure it out. And so like, as you learn how to use a swing set, what you're basically doing is, is you're moving your body and shifting your weight in such a way to create what's called resonance. Um, so, as you add energy to the swing, you swing higher and higher and higher. The first time a little kid gets on a swing and tries to swing, it has no clue. It's just kind of like moving their body. And it just, the swing goes, doesn't go anywhere. There has to be a rhythm to how they move. So what resonance is, is when you take small forces and you apply them at regular intervals to something that can oscillate, like a swing set, right? Like, uh, I don't know, a piece of glass. Anything that can vibrate, what happens is, is that it increases the amplitude. You guys have seen this or done this with certain types of glasses. If you've ever seen anybody uh, take their finger on a wine glass and move it around the top, what happens is if it's a certain type of glass, usually lead crystal is the glass that is used there, it will start making noise. And if you guys have ever seen that or done that, um, that's resonance adding energy in small intervals to increase the amplitude. So as a swing, you start small and then it starts rocking big and you're really moving. Okay. So that's, that's resonance and resonance exists in lots of different places in our world. Um, the forces that are added, you can't just add the forces and add and, and, and at any kind of frequency. It can't be sporadic. You've got to do it at the resonance frequency. I mean, one of the, the, okay, so I'll give you a dumb example of resonance I experienced the other day. I was filling up this bucket of water and I filled the bucket of water too high. And when you walk with water, if you walk at a certain pace or any kind of regular frequency, what happens is the water spills out. It starts to slosh back and forth and eventually spills out, all right? Because when we walk, we walk with a certain rhythm. We don't like take fast steps and then slow steps and then fast steps. When you add these forces at the resonance frequency, the object starts to oscillate. Okay. So like you do this in your bathtub, fill your bathtub and start splashing the water at a certain rate. What will happen is, is that the waves will be su super big in certain places and super small in other places. Okay. Um, I'm going to send a video you guys. Uh, it's called the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. There's this bridge that they built. Uh, in Tacoma, Washington, where uh, if the winds were just right, it created these resonance frequencies and it made um, basically the bridge oscillate in such a way where it collapsed the bridge. So one of the weird things about resonance and the reason why the bridge collapsed is because it made what's called a standing wave. A standing wave occurs in objects where the frequency is just right. So it's at a resonance frequency. Standing waves are why um, certainly like if you strum a guitar, why certain notes sound good, certain notes don't sound very, very good. Um, standing waves are created to create this sound.
And you, like I said, you can be sound waves, mechanical waves, doesn't matter. Um, a stand, God, and like I said, this sucks because, I mean, we have a spring here. We could do a standing wave. You guys can see this, but you're going to have to watch a video of this. Um, a standing wave occurs when you have these areas where these things oscillate. So I'll just kind of draw this. Like one person on one end, one person on the other. This is a rope or a string, and we're just kind of going up and down. If you go at a certain rhythm, you can create these standing waves where there's areas where there's max constructive interference. So the anti-nodes are where the crests and the troughs are at. Okay, so max constructive interference. But there's these areas where there is no interference. These places, these things are called nodes. So an area where there is maximal destructive interference is called a node. This is what I experienced in my movie theater when I was a kid. It was some weird sound node where I couldn't hear anything because the air pressure and the gas particles were not vibrating in such a way. Okay. So those are standing waves. And that's kind of the phenomenon of how waves can be added in such a way to maximally construct or maximally destruct and it makes standing waves. So there's literally a bridge in Washington that steel and concrete and asphalt or whatever was doing that. The bridge was. And like I said, I'll show you the I'll send a video to you. It's a it's an old video. I don't I don't even remember what year it happened. 20s, 30s, 40s, can't remember. Right? But that's kind of the idea behind standing waves. Okay. So standing waves are um, when you hear like I said, we get into sound and like certain notes sound different ways, fundamental frequencies and, and uh, there's overtures and all sorts of weird stuff. Okay. Um, so that's literally all I, all I have for, for that part. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, problems or anything that you can do. Here's an example of a problem with destructive interference, like one that would require really easy math. Okay, two waves are appro approaching each other. This wave has an amplitude of one meter. This wave has an amplitude of 0.5 meters. If they approach each other and they combine at this point, what will be the amplitude of the two waves as they meet or intersect? Well, you have to look at how the waves are approaching each other. One's, one's up, one's down. This is gonna be an area of destructive interference. So the magnitude of the wave when they interact is going to be this guy subtracted from this guy, it's gonna be a net 0.5 meters above the equilibrium position. So like I said, easy math here. We could change this problem very easily with constructive interference by saying, well, let's do that guy. That one is two meters. They approach each other. They hit. What is the magnitude of the amplitude or how big is the amplitude when they intersect? They're both above the equilibrium position. That one's two. That one's one. This is going to be constructive interference. It's going to be three meters above. Okay, so easy math there. Right? Um, I'm going to push stop here.